excuse me little dog all right guys it is a spectacularly gorgeous over the top beautiful what is it it is a tuesday october 24th here in the collapse of everything sitting here and enjoying my ever earlier sunset margarita over the collapse it, it, you know it's barely six o'clock and it's already getting dark around here but it's a gorgeous late october night uh tuesday october 24th 2023 and uh my little dog and i have been busting ass all day at bugs in a jar farm getting ready to get out of here getting all of my perennials planted for next summer but uh now uh that i've given myself a hernia and a backache i can finally come over here and start doom scrolling so i know that's what doomers do is we doom scroll yes so uh what do we got? I just, this took me about five minutes to set up this video. You, you know, I, 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 I talked to these other uh, people on YouTube, and, and apparently a lot of people, even here in the Doomosphere, spend like hours and hours and hours planning their Doomer porn uh, video. Uh, and, and, and no doubt the quality shows, but it, but, but, but who gives a damn about all of it anyway? Uh, <clears throat> so this is a five minute dive into, into doom. Okay. How about human caused warming now a major factor in formation of El Nino? Mm, a new study finds that climate change has become a significant factor in the formation of El Niños. During El Niño, warm waters pool in the eastern Pacific and radiate heat into the air, leading to hotter weather across much of the globe, except for the Finger Lakes of New York. A strong El Niño is now taking shape, and according to NOAA, the, what is NOAA, National Oce Oceans and Atmospheric Administration, there is a 99% chance that 2023 will be the hottest year ever recorded. <clears throat> um, I don't think this is anybody coming up here. The new study shows that historically there was a strong link between changes in solar output and the onset of El Nino, but now El Nino is more heavily influenced by human-caused warming than changes in solar input. Uh, and then they break all of this down. Uh, this is published in the Geophysical Research Letters. From the 1970s onward, we see clear signals that can only be attributed to the consequences of man-made climate change, lead author Paul Wilcox said in a statement. Uh, recent research shows that warming you know, caused by humans has led to more frequent and extreme El Ninos. The new study said Wil Wilcox reveals that, quote, climate change may have led, may have led to a climatic tipping point being crossed in the 1970s with the initiation of a more permanent El Nino pattern. So that tipping point 50 years ago, and we're just now figuring it out. Now I think you can find a lot. I'm sure uh, Paul Beckwith is all over this one, and I'm sure Sandy and 
Jennifer will be squawking about it on Friday night, so I'm just going to... You know, Paul Beckwith, I mean, that dude has really turned into a doomer recently, hasn't he? Uh, if, if he would just uh, back off of the, the Israeli kerfuffle and uh, stick to doom and gloom, uh, I, I'm, I'm waiting for Paul Beckwith uh, to mention the words overshoot or overpopulation anywhere in all of his doom mongering. If anyone has ever heard Paul Beckwith, I think Paul has three kids. If anyone has a video clip of Paul Beckwith ever using the word overshoot, please let me know. Anyway, uh, good for Paul becoming more of a doomer. So we're just going to touch on this one from NBC News. Comprehensive study of West Antarctic ice sheet finds collapse may be unavoidable. Collapse may be unavoidable. You know, when is the mainstream media going to cut the crap with the may? The may be. Uh, please. The most comprehensive effort yet to predict how global warming will affect the the West Antarctic ice sheet has found there is little humanity can do to stop the ice shelves from melting, which could collapse the sheet and raise sea levels by several feet in the coming centuries, plural. You know, this is where the, the doomers get all excited and then get the big letdown, uh, like, uh, yeah, like sea level rise is going to be uh, what's on the, the uh, 15 or 20 people on the planet uh, three centuries from now. Anyway, <clears throat> the new report published yesterday in the journal Nature Climate Communications is a full-throated warning that one of the worst sea level rise scenarios scientists have cautioned about since the 1970s is most likely in progress and that little can be done to stop it. Otherwise known as there's not a goddamn thing uh, to stop it. it. It is not a matter uh, of if, it's only a matter of when and how fast. Uh, yes, the study is the first attempt to model the uncertain atmosphere and ocean processes that could doom the ice shelves. Hmm, and it doesn't factor all of the variables, variables that could play a role in melting. Key questions remain unanswered including how much melt our emissions to date will cause and how fast it is expected to happen. Uh, this is Caitlin Naughton from the British Antarctic Survey, lead author of the new study. Quote, it appears we may have, we may have lost control of the West Antarctic ice shelf melting over the 21st century. West Antarctic ice shelf melting is one impact of climate change that we're probably just going to have to adopt to, and that very likely means some amount of sea level rise we cannot avoid. Coastal communities will either have to build around will either have to build around or be abandoned. Close quote. The West Antarctic Ant I the West Antarctic ice sheet near the southern tip of South America is considered by scientists 
to be one of the most important potential contributors to sea level rise because of climate change. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, the study does not make specific sea level rise predictions but outside researchers have estimated in the past that the total collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheet could contribute about 10 feet to overall sea level rise. The melt process will likely take several centuries. Yes, other processes in contributing to sea level rise included the melting of Greenland's ice sheet, the loss of mountain glaciers, <clears throat> and the expansion of ocean water due to warming. Uh, researchers are scrambling to understand these complicated ice sheet dynamics and whether there are critical thresholds for runaway melt. I think that's what Paul is ranting about. Uh, without adaptation, 10 feet of sea level rise would likely submerge much of Miami and South Florida, make Baton Rouge, Louisiana oceanfront property, and inundate parts of Brooklyn and New York City. Uh, The UN, the IPCC in 2021 estimated that sea levels would rise 0 0.9 to 3.3 feet, but those numbers do not factor uncertain ice sheet processes like the ones being studied in the new paper. Uh, David Snyder a polar scientist from the University of Colorado in Boulder said, quote, I would personally double any number IPCC has. I would put an upper bound of two meters at least with a lot of uncertainty. Anyway, let's see. Let's do one more uh now it, it's so hard when you're just doom scrolling through headlines you really have to uh, you, you know spend about 30 seconds to to figure out which articles in the mainstream media are, are just another spin on the same study you know in the original research so understand that this headline is talking about a a, a completely different uh, study than the one uh, uh, we were just talking about <clears throat> several versions of this this is from Gizmodo headed to potential collapse you know what was the last one maybe collapsing headed to potential collapse. Alarm bells are blaring in new climate report. Yes, global climate extremes are adding up and scientists are warning with renewed urgency that both natural and human systems are at risk of collapse. All right, in a new report published in the journal Bioscience, Researchers analyze what they describe as 35 planetary vital signs used to track climate change. They found that 20 of the 35 are at new extremes. Uh, the vital signs, which include things like ice sheet melt, greenhouse gas emissions, meat production, tree cover loss, and billion dollar flood events highlight the interconnectedness of the climate crisis. For example, the report references the rate of ice loss in Greenland, which in turn contributes to sea level rise. Other records include our ever-rising methane emissions, 
and CO2 emissions. Meanwhile, fossil fuel subsidies, another vital sign they tracked, are at an all-time high. Imagine that. Uh, who is this? Uh, the head researcher, I, I love it, his name is Ripple. What is Dr. Ripple's first name? Back in 2019, uh, whoever, you know, you can tell that an editor has been moving stuff around. The shit happens all the time. So, anyway, so you don't even know who the guy is, and then he's going to get introduced later in the story. But anyway... This is some climatologist named Ripple uh, that the goddamn editor was too stupid to, to realize that, that he moved the paragraphs around to, uh, you know, to make the story not sound as true as it is. <clears throat> Back in 2019, Ripple and other concerned climate scientists published another paper on the climate emergency and that report outlined six areas. Uh, yeah, Ripple says he expected climate change-related extremes to continue to increase over time since then, but some moments in 2023 shocked him, like seeing images of the New York City skyline shrouded in smoke from Canadian wildfires. <clears throat> or learning that so much smoke was produced it broke pollution records in just a few months. Quoting the mystery man Ripple, could be a woman, Ms. Ripple, quote, The number of wildfires and the smoke, it is quite jarring. The area that burned in Canada is off the charts. Yes. <clears throat> The report did note that more than 2,000 country, regional, and city governments have declared climate emergencies, which counterintuitively is cause for some tentative, <laughs> is cause the fact that over 2,000 climate emergencies have been declared is according to Ripple, calls for some tentative, <laughs> some tentative, <laughs> some tentative, <laughs> tentative, <laughs> the first thing about addressing any big problem is to admit to it and raise awareness, he said. Yes, there we go. The new report emphasizes that our financial and energy systems are the problem, not simply the number of people, 8 billion on the planet. Here we go again. At least they mentioned uh, the 8 billion people on the planet. Uh, let, let me make one correction to this clueless moron, obviously a breeder. We will never find out who this uh, mysterious Ripple is. Uh, never identified in the article who Ripple is. But uh, it, 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 just so Ripple, as I say, I'm quite sure is a breeder, uh, understands <coughs> the problem is the number of of people on the planet. That is the problem, okay? We would not have the financial and ener energy systems that we have if we did not have 8 billion people on the planet. But anyway, it is getting dark and I want to... Uh, turned over to fossil fuels. Uh, this one we're going to send out to all of those clueless moron Trump tards talking about how Joe Biden has declared war on fossil fuels.
So, how is big oil thriving under Biden? How big oil is thriving under Biden? There you go. Many voters think of President Biden as a green energy champion who wants to put fossil fuels out of business. But if you look at the financial performance of oil and natural gas companies under Biden's presidency, you might think he is fossil fuels biggest booster. Hmm. Energy, you know, leading the pack being uh, oil companies, energy has been the best performing sector during much of Biden's president presidency, which is now fueling a mega merger consolidation sweep among some of the world's biggest energy companies. ExxonMobil just announced plans to buy oil driller Pioneer for $64 billion, prompting Chevron to bid $53 billion for Hess on October 23rd. <clears throat> More deals are possible as huge energy firms hustle to lock in premier drilling sites as the point of peak oil defined here as maximum global demand for the commodity, followed by a gradual decline, comes into view. Perhaps, perhaps in the next decade. Yes, uh, the Exxon and Chevron deals are both all stock transactions. That is possible because shares of America's two largest energy firms have soared during the past two years under Joe Biden, giving the acquirers plenty of headroom for big purchases without having to tap cash or borrow. Yes, big oil has been thriving, of course, at the same time Biden is overseeing the biggest green energy push in American history. This is, you know, one more time, the frying pan and the fire. You know, up until Joe Biden, it was always either the frying pan or the fire. Uh, but now we have both. <clears throat> This might sound like a set of schizophrenic developments in the U.S. energy sector with a jacked-up fossil fuel industry threatening Biden's green energy push or vice versa. Once again, it is no longer vice or versa. It is, it, it is vice and versa. It's vice and versa. It's frying pan and the fire. Joe Biden is destroying this planet with both hands, speaking out of both sides of his mouth when he can uh, remember how to read a cue card without falling asleep. But... Uh, I want to close. It is a gorgeous moonrise over the collapse. But we're going to close with Fortune magazine. <laughs> Chevron, you know, we just talked about Chevron. Chevron's boss says the $300 billion oil giant has changed life on Earth for the better. Quote, we're not selling a product that is evil. The era of global boiling is here, with many accusing big oil companies like Chevron, Shell, and BP of being major contributors toward climate catastrophe while exhibiting grotesque greed. However, Chevron's CEO, Mike Worth, disagrees with that narrative. In fact, 
Worth thinks that his $300 billion oil and gas company is, quote, selling a product that has changed the quality of life on this planet for the better. And that is exactly what it has done if you are a human. Uh, life would suck without oil. All right? Make the, uh, I am 100% uh, percent in agreement uh, with this planet-eating uh, whatever. That, that is exactly uh, what his product has done. It has changed the quality of life for humans on this planet for the better. <clears throat> the 63-year-old industry veteran even described the company he has been leading in 2018 as, quote, <coughs> grounded in integrity and a deep belief in doing the right thing in an interview with the Financial Times before brushing off critics and making a real-world case for fossil fuels. Quote, we are not selling a product that is evil. We're selling a product that's good. Close quote. Chevron did not immediately respond to Fortune's request for comment. So uh, let's hear from Big Oil's biggest critics in Fortune magazine. It's hardly surprising that Worth, who has worked at Chevron for 41 years, including five as its CEO, would depend his would defend his employer. However, mounting evidence has suggested the burning of fossil fuels is a major cause of climate change and the biggest contributor of global greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, since the early 1900s, the world has warmed by around 1.1 degrees Celsius or 2 degrees Fahrenheit, with the United Nations declaring this year that, quote, the era of global boiling has arrived. Yes. Uh, even Joe Biden complained about energy companies, quote, making more money than God at consumers' expense. Meanwhile, UN Secretary and Dumer in Chief <clears throat> Secretary General Antonio Guterres condemned the grotesque greed of oil and gas companies while urging governments to introduce a windfall tax to help those in the most need. Yes, but Worth pushes back on his critics. Although Worth agreed that as one of the world's largest oil and gas producers, Chevron needs to work with its critics, quote, to be part of the solution. But he quickly added the caveat, but that cannot deter us from what we do, which is supplying consumer demand for more and more fossil fuels. Uh, Worth's message is clear. Lower emissions are important, but not at the expense of maintaining an affordable and reliable energy supply. For that reason, he said he doesn't see demand for fossil fuels dying out anytime soon. Quote, you can build scenarios but we live in the real world, and we have to allocate capital to meet real world demand. Do you think so? On that basis and taking into accounting that energy security, energy affordability, and lower emissions, quote, are in tension with one another. There you go. 
Chevron will spend just $2 billion of its $14 billion capital spending budget on lower carbon investments this year because such bets offer lower returns. And I can't imagine why. Uh, there you go. I agree with the vast majority of what that man said. But anyway, uh, it is getting dark here. The little solar bugs have are blinking away. And the little dog says it's time for his dinner. Oh, man. Don't think you can see the moon rise over the mountain. When is full moon? Probably, what is it, Tuesday? Probably Friday night. Yeah, one more weekend of the full moon. Sunset and moon rise over bugs in a jar farm for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, five more nights. Get out there and enjoy your sunsets and moon rises over the collapse while you still can. Bye, guys.